The next shipment of supplies for the International Space Station is due to launch on Sunday, as mentioned, and that Dragon vehicle will be bringing supplies for the crew members, plus station equipment and new science experiments. Among those experiments are some focusing on protein crystal growth, including one known as CPCGHM, for commercial protein crystal growth high density modified. Principal investigator is Dr. Larry DeLucas, the director of the Center for Structural Biology at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, who has a history of space-based research that includes his flight as a payload specialist on space shuttle mission STS-50, the first flight of the United States Microgravity Laboratory. I spoke with him recently about this experiment and asked him to comment on the focus on membrane proteins in the human body. We'll listen to that interview now. This is Mission Control Houston. In our body and bacteria and viruses, uh, there's proteins that um, exist in the membranes uh, of, of these uh, organisms. And in, in the human system, there, there's literally, you know, uh, thousands of different membrane proteins, and they play key roles uh, biologically, such as signal transduction. When something happens outside a cell, how does that information get imparted inside the cell to affect some other function within the cell. Um, they, they, uh, they are critical in many, many of the drugs that, that we develop um, for different diseases. Um, so the, the unfortunate part of this is that if you look at how crystallography is used, we crystallize the protein that we'd like to determine the structure for. Um, and membrane proteins are probably the most difficult ones of all to get, not only to get a crystal, but to get a crystal that is of high enough quality so that we can determine the three-dimensional structure using X-ray crystallography. We have to make the crystals out of the proteins in order to study the, the structure itself and learn about how it functions exactly. Yeah, and that's that's the you know kind of interesting and and it's fun to to crystallize a protein, but the easy ones have been done in nature. How do you grow these crystals in space, and what's the station's uh, the station crew's participation or their role in in growing these crystals while they're up there in space? We know from previous experiments that the crystals grow much much more slowly okay. because now the only thing that gets molecules to the crystal surface is uh, um, just uh, the natural vibration of molecules. It's called free interface. Dif uh, well, it's just called uh, fixed law of diffusion. They just vibrate, bump into each other, and make their way to the crystal. But they grow literally an order of magnitude more slowly than they do here on Earth, which allows the molecule when it comes into the crystal to align itself more perfectly before right. the next one comes in and traps it in a misalignment. Wow, and sounds so, fascinating. So, so that's, what, that's what we're comparing is without, you know, buoyancy-induced convection, which we get here on Earth anytime we grow crystals, by just letting the molecules slowly diffuse to the crystal, you know, not only we know we can get better crystals, the question on this flight and this is why we're flying 100 of very difficult proteins to work with, okay. um, what percentage will be better? And how much better will they be? We want to statistically show, you know, once and for all, the value of doing this. And we have the advantage of a space station where the crystals will have plenty of time to grow to their, their full size. So we have literally thousands of experiments going up so that each protein has multiple chances um, to try to get the very best crystals. We're doing this also on the ground with ground controls using the same protein, same batch, everything. Everything's identical, but we will not know when it returns in August which came from space and which are the ground controls. Everything has a barcode, and only one engineer knows, you know, what's what. It'll all be mixed together for each protein. We'll do the entire analysis, and when it's done, uh, only when we're completely finished will it be revealed which came from space and ground. That way we eliminate any perceived bias that a scientist may choose a better crystal for space just to make it look better. One um, other question that I would like to ask is uh, why are the space-grown crystals so important to have for research in the disease process and the drug development? Can you explain to um, what sure. the importance um, is for us so here on Earth. the beginning, and I want to point that out, it's the, one of the first steps. The first step in drug development, you know, after you know the protein target, is to design a, a potential drug, right, that will interact with that protein. 
by having the structure, it makes it go much faster, and usually you get a more uh, effective drug with fewer side effects, and there are many examples, um, n not from space, but from just ground-based research where drugs were developed using the structure of a protein. Um, it's sort of like if, if, you, if you had to design a key, right, that would open my car door that's locked in the parking lot. You know, a, a locksmith has a key that will open all the car doors. But if I showed him the structure of my lock, he could make a key that would only unlock my car door. By having the structure of the protein, it helps you make a drug that's more specific so it interacts just with my protein and hopefully not others in our body because we literally have about a half million different proteins in our body. When these drugs interact with proteins that you don't want them to, that's how you often get you know, unwanted side effects. Very interesting. Again, thank you, Larry, for uh, taking the time to talk with me. Um, good luck in the uh, continued research, and uh, thanks a lot. Okay, you're very welcome.